Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of code in a Power Automate connector. We are not going to use Azure functions. So this is going to happen within the context of Power Automate and we are going to back this up with a real life demo that is converting XML to HTML and then archiving it into PDF. So without wasting any further time, let's get into the demo. So here I'm in Power Automate and here you can see my custom connector action. The custom connector action will go ahead and have two input parameters, namely input XML and XSLT string. I'll copy a sample XML from this article. So I'll just copy it, put it here. Now I'll go back to the article and copy the XSLT as well. So this looks good. This looks good. I'll save it and I'll test it and I'll click on done. So our Power Automate has executed successfully. I'll copy this output. I'll go back to W3 Schools editor and I'll click on run. And here you see my friends, our XML has been transformed into an HTML table. So isn't this awesome? Now let's go ahead and create our custom connector. To create a custom connector, you need to go to the data tab and click on custom connector. Then you need to go ahead and click on new custom connector and you'll click create from blank. I'll give it a name. I'll say custom connector XML to HTML and I'll click on create. So first thing it will go ahead and ask us a host. So here I'm just going to put in any dummy host, something like Claven.test and I'll click on the security tab. We are not going to define any security for this custom connector. Then comes the definition. But before we look into the definition, I want to go ahead and show you where the real magic happens. The magic happens here, where you can go ahead and sprinkle code in your custom connector. If I try to enable this, there's nothing coming in the drop down. Remember, if you want to go ahead and associate your code, you need to have an operation ID associated in your definition. So first thing we need to define is the operation ID. I'll go back to my definition. I'll click on Squ Swagger Editor and here I'm going to create a Swagger. Now, for those who are not familiar with Swagger, Swagger is an open API specification standard with which you can define a basic structure. So the action that you created is actually the output of the swagger. We are interested in the paths. The path usually has got a response that is responses, a method. In our case, it will be a post method. And then we are also going to define parameters in the definition as well as the operation ID in path. So I would suggest go ahead and have a look at this. However, if you think it's too complicated, just follow along with me. I'll try to type in and try to explain you how actually I'm defining a Swagger. So Swagger is actually in JSON or in YAML, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use YAML. So first thing, as I told you, I need to define <coughs> a path. So I'll say convert XML to HTML. Second, I need a method and the method is going to be pushed. Most importantly, I need responses. In the responses, I'm going to pa return a default response. When I say a default response, it's going to have a description. I'll just set it to default as well. It does not matter. And then I'm going to pass in a schema. The schema is going to be an empty schema in our particular use case. If you see, it's very important to go ahead and have a proper structure. If the structure is incorrect, it will give you an error. Now our responses have been defined. Next, I'll just pass in the operation ID. Operation ID is very important as I told you, right? So operation ID, I'll say XML to HTML. Next, I need to pass in the parameters. For that, I need to first define a name. Just say value. Next, I'll say where is the, it's going to be input in the body. So in body. Next, I need to define a schema. So I misspelled the parameters. Parameters. Now I don't have the error. So this looks good. Now I need to define 
a schema so that I can pass in the input XML and the output XML. So I'm going to give this a name. I'll say the parameter is required. And what are the two parameters that I'm going to use? I'm going to use input XML and XSLT string. Right, then I need to define the properties of how it's going to be, what is going to be the type of the input parameter. So the properties are there. So I'll say input XML is going to be of type, I'll say string. Similarly, XSLT string is going to be of type string again. And now I need to go ahead and reference this in my parameters input body. So to do that, I need to type in dollar ref reference and then I need to pass in the path. So I say hash going to be definitions and inside definition it's going to be this. So ref definitions XSLT and I have no errors so this is good. So this is going to be our swagger and this is what is going to go ahead and be displayed in Power Automate. Remember one thing I missed out, which is very important. We need to further define the type of the parameter or the definition. I'll say it's going to be of type object. I'll go to the code now. So now in the drop down, I actually see XML to HTML, which is the operation ID defined. However, we need to understand one thing in the definition we went ahead and defined the input parameters. How can we go ahead and get that input parameters in our code? So you are a power user, right? And what do we do? We look at the documentation. So we, Microsoft has got a good documentation which tells write code in a custom connector. First thing it tells us that everything we need to write or your code that we need to write is should be in the script based class. So we'll do that. There are a few supporting classes and interfaces that we need to use. One is the operation ID, which we can use. And then we have a few samples. The first sample just goes ahead and returns hello world. However, the second sample is very interesting. In this particular sample, if you see, they are going ahead and passing the input body as like this, which is similar to ours, right? So what if we copy this code? and we go back into our custom connector. So in our case, the text to check is not defined. What is our input parameter? We have input XML and XSLT string. Go back to the code. I'll chain this with input XML and another parameter that we need to use. So chain this to input XML. And another parameter that we need to use is XSLT. So our parameters are now inside our code block. Now what next? We need the code to actually go ahead and convert XML to HTML using XSLT. So this I found in stack. So if you go ahead and Google XML to HTML, you'll get the second link which says simplest way to transform. We can copy this code in from here and I'll paste it here. Now in this case, I need to replace this XSLT with my XSLT and the input XML with my input XML. So this is good. Now finally, this is going ahead and returning the type in JSON, but in our schema, we did not define anything and we are going to define, return the values as a string. So we need to define a new string content and I'm going to return the results dot to string. So that is pretty much our code, right? It was so simple. What did we do? We went ahead and got the JSON response from our custom connector that is input XML and XSLT. We stored them in variables and then we went ahead and looked up for our code. In the code, we went ahead and passed in our variables that were the input parameters and we are returning it as string. Now I'll say create. So while this is getting created, I want you to go back to this particular article. Now, just remember 
the namespace supported are system.xml that we are going to use. We ha there are other namespaces as well. But if I go back to my code, I get an error saying that XML compiled transformation could not be found and the namespace could not be found. Right? If I just copy this, let me try to copy this and put it on a notepad so that we can read the full error. Yes. So it tells me the namespace of type could not be found. Ah, this is a problem for me, right? How can I go ahead and resolve it? So first thing, I go to Google and type in XML compile transform and see which namespace does it use. So I see it uses system.xml.xsl. We have system.xml. Okay, the base class is there. So I think we can define a using statement or maybe define the complete namespace in our code. So I go back to my code and I need to change this with this, this with this. So I'm giving the entire namespace saying system.xml.xsl compiled transform. Right? Remember this. This is very important. This is a pro tip. If you think that if something is missing and if the main or the base class is there, you can try and define the entire namespace and see if your code, if your custom code connector actually goes ahead and saves. So let's stay patiently and let's keep our fingers crossed with this. So it's not given me an error yet. So probably it's trying to go ahead and save it and boom, our custom connector does not have an error. I go to the test pane and if you see our action is correctly defined, all I need to do is pass in an XML. I'll go to the article which we used previously. I'll just pass this in. I'll go ahead and pass in the XSLT. I'll paste this in and I need to create a new connection as well. And I'll click on test operation. So first time it gave me some sort of error. And however, the second time it gave me, it returned me an HTML, which is actually good. And I'll create an instant flow. Click on create. And let's consider that I'm going to hard code it for now. So custom. So the name of a connector was custom code connector XML to HTML. So it's the second one. Uh, if you see, I have been testing this a lot before this demo. And here I can pass in the XSL, which I already have it on my quick clipboard and I'm going to pass in the XML. Now, what next? Now let's consider that I want to convert this into a PDF. So to convert this into a PDF, I'm going to use my favorite Mohembi action. So Mohembi, I'll say convert HTML to PDF. I'll pass this in. I'll pass the entire body. Remember this. The body should be returned as a string. And then I will send this as an email. I'll say Outlook. I'll say send an email v2. I'll give mod admin. I'll give this a test saying that XML to HTML. What I'll do is that first things first, I'll also pass in the body into the XML as an email body. So let me click here. I'll pass this in here only once, my friend. And then I'll also attach it. So I'll say sample XML.pdf and I'll pass it the processed file content. I'll save it. So if you're looking to archive thousands of XMLs, this is one of the way that you can do it. And if you see, my friends, I'm not using a th Azure or anything else to go ahead and run or to save my code, right? This is all happening within the context of Power Automate. So I have said run, say done. Let's see how does it go. So this is given me no error. If I expand it, it actually goes ahead and shows me a proper XML. My convert HTML to PDF action has succeeded. If I go to my Outlook 
and open it in new tab I have a delivery failed but I'll just check with the sent items so if you see out here I have a beautiful table in the body and I also have a PDF attached so here my friends you have created your own custom code connector within few minutes I hope this session was very informative to you and thank you for listening bye bye